Well, it's a pleasure to meet you, first of all. Um, I guess the last few weeks and months have been a fantastic experience for you, playing for Bristol City's first team. Yeah, definitely. It's been a good time to come through and it's been really exciting for me. I mean, what a season. Am I right in saying you started the season on loan at Yate Town? Yeah, so I started the season there, played a few games for them, um, went quite well, and then came back here and tried to get through and break into the first team. At what point did it dawn on you that you were in Nigel Pearson's first team plans? Um, I think it was when I came in after the World Cup break, and then I started training consistently and started getting a bit of like match day inclusions and stuff like that. Yeah, so did it start off, hey, you're training with the first team today and then things progressed from there? Yeah, so it started off with like, I was there for like the odd day and then progressed and then over time then I just moved it like more and more every day. Yeah, yeah. and then came Swansea, your, your debut, what do you remember about coming on in that FA Cup game? Yeah, definitely, I remember it was a sat there and it was a really tight game and then we went to extra time and I was and then I was quite shocked because I was warming up, it was warming up in extra time and he's called me and was like, you're on, and he's like, just go out there and be yourself and energy. Because you made an instant impression on us in, in the commentary box. Um, how natural did it feel playing for the first team compared to playing for Yeta and youth games previously? Yeah, well, it's definitely helped training there quite a long time before coming on. So it was like, I'm obviously used to the players and stuff like that. But so I felt like I settled in quite well when I got on. And then came Manchester City as well. What was that like as an experience facing all those World Cup players, uh, world class players? Yeah, definitely an amazing experience. It was very like surreal moment to see some of these players up close and then to even get on against them was even better. And then came your full debut the other week. I mean, um, again, that's just great progression, wasn't it? And a sign of the progress you're making. How, how big a boost was it when you were told you were going to start for City? Yeah, I was delighted. Like, it, was a, it was a big thing for me and I was really proud to start. And I was just hoping I could go out there and make an impact. And how do you think you've played so far? So far, I think I've done quite well. I think I've had a good game against Swansea and hopefully just push on from there. Can I tell you what I like about you so far is that you're not intimidated by all these experienced players. You've even got a booking, which of mm. course isn't going to be um, a great thing. But um, do you feel at home playing against you know all these experienced, well-known players? Yeah, definitely. I feel like I'm I'm catching up and I'm picking up to the same standard, hopefully. So and then obviously being around good players and our team and experienced players helps me a lot. So I think that's helping me ease into it. And presumably, there's more to come from you. Where would you like to improve? Hopefully there's more to come hopefully there's more to come from me and I wanna improve like just getting on the ball more and just dictating a bit better. I think that'll happen more when I get more comfortable, playing more games, hopefully. Yeah, because your your manager's just told us what a good technical player you are. Um are you a defensive midfielder, an attacking midfielder, a bit of both? How, how do you see your game longer um, term? In this I try to be box to box, I try to do both. I'm I know I'm very defensive minded, but then on the ball I can get forward as well at the same time. So I'd like to say I can do both. And you're in a midfield that contains Alex Scott. Um, you've got the experience of Matty James, Andy King. How, how beneficial is it playing with players like that? Oh yeah, it's very beneficial when you have like the experienced players because they help you through a game, good information, which can go a long way in a game. And then you have Alex Scott, which obviously you know how good he is as well. So it's really good to play alongside all of them. And has it been a seamless journey for you so far, or have you had one or two setbacks where perhaps you thought you weren't going to make it as a professional footballer? Yeah, I've had setbacks, but I've come for times where like I haven't been picked for the t like twenty ones game and stuff like that. But then it's about resilience and how you come back from that, and I think that's been a big part of it for me. Yeah, and what are your ambitions in the game? We'll start with um, Wales, who you've played for at youth level. How much of a dream is it to play for them one day? Yeah, it's a massive dream for me to get into that team. I just got to keep pushing, and hopefully one day will happen. And we're in a season that has single digits left on it, so your motivation short term is to keep playing, I guess. Longer term, how do you see your future? How hard will it be to break into the first team on a regular basis? Well, it depends on how I play. Hopefully I keep playing well and hopefully break in and become a solid, solidify a spot for myself. What's it like playing in front of big crowds as well? Does that motivate you? Yeah, definitely. It's nothing better than hearing a crowd clapping and shouting your name when you do something really well. Absolutely. And your next game, Stoke away, which is always a tough game, isn't it? But how much are you looking forward to a challenge like that? Yeah, looking forward to it massively. It's a big game for us and we want to win. So we're trying to, we're trying to really look forward to this game. OK, and a few quick fire questions. Um, who did you support growing up? Oh, Man United. Man United, OK. Mm -hmm. So um, why Man United and um, I've, how often do you get to see them? I've just been surrounded by them quite a lot. So like my family and stuff all supported Man United. So I've just grew up and I've picked up off them, really. And who are your idols? Who do you look up to as, you know, players? Hmm, I've got quite a bit, but Kevin De Bruyne is probably one of my main ones. The way he picks out passes, I want to try and be like that. Hmm. So, yeah. And do you have a dream, an ultimate ambition in football? What would be the pinnacle for you? Definitely. To be good to the top. That's my dream. Okay. Make sure I go to the top. Great to meet you. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Cheers.
I don't know, did you get De Bruyne shirt after the, the Man City Unfortunately game? Unfortunately not, I didn't. Did you get any, any of them? Um, I got a Kanji shirt though. Oh, did you? Yeah. Ah, nice one. Where, where have you, is that probably on the wall? Is it? Yeah, no, it's at home. My parents are getting that framed and stuff. Is it? Ah, oh, lovely. Do you still have to pinch yourself at the way you, you rise this season coming from Yay playing Manchester City, playing now in the first team? Yeah, definitely. It's obviously, I've got to like, just like, sometimes I take time to think back of like how it's happened and stuff and like, just sometimes it just takes me back and I just got to remember like what I did to get here and I've got to keep pushing now. Like, I can't stop now. Your, your, your full debut against Swansea, I thought you were the best player on the park in the, in the Bristol City shirt. What were the emotions before the game? Were you nervous? Were you excited? How, how did you feel? Well, obviously there was going to be a bit of nerves, but I think everyone helped me get past that. They were just like, play my game, do what I think's right, and like everyone's behind me. So it was nervous, of course, but it, like it was easy to settle in because I had so much support around me on how to get into the game and stuff, and like there was not a lot of pressure on me. But which senior pros in particular have kind of put their arm around you and, and helped guide you? Um, there's been quite a lot, but I'd say Andy King, um, Matty James, and even Scotty's like in the Swansea game was like just play my game and stuff. So yeah, I think a, a lot of the younger players have kind of spoken about Andy King and and how influential he he's been in, in in helping guide and bring players into the first team. What in specifically has he how how has he helped you? I think it's more like he'll just always keep you on track and he'll like tell you what you can do and stuff like that and he'll like give you when you're playing alongside him give you information on the pitch off the pitch you sit, if you need help and you want to, you can go to him for anything like if you need any help off the pitch and stuff like about on the pitch stuff he'll tell you so I think and if you need answers about anything he'll get them for you. Do you, do you have you set yourself goals or ambitions or are you just no nah. so I've set myself goals I set them a few months ago and obviously that was to play and get a start and stuff like that and obviously now I've done that it's like I've got to change them and just try and stay in this team now yeah. so yeah yeah I can ask about how the, the kind of move to, to Bristol City came about because you joined at under 13 level is, is that right from from Cardiff yeah so how did how did you get spotted so I was playing for my school's team which is Newport schools which is like the area and then Bristol City spotted me but I was at Cardiff at the time and then I've moved to I've moved to Bristol City midway through in the thirteens when I left Cardiff. So yeah, and then I came on trial here and then joined and then got signed. And and when you see Academy players coming through at Bristol City as they have done so so much under Nigel Pearson this season, how much motivation does that give you? Oh yeah, massively, because obviously last season I've seen all like Tommy, Sam Bell, all them lot break through. So it's obviously motivated me and like you can see the pathway is really good. So that's obviously motivating me and it's, it's obviously going to motivate others as well so it's really good yeah I think you've got one of the coolest and most iconic middle names in, in football in Rivaldo <laughs> yeah. I have to ask where did that how did that come about um, it's come from my dad he just really liked the player and I think he's just <laughs> yeah. sneaked her in there somehow so yeah <laughs> yeah lots of, uh, lots of live up to big boots to feel that yeah, yeah I I'm know sure you'll, I'm sure you'll make it thanks very much that's okay and were you surprised perhaps that you weren't involved in the last international camp of Wales because obviously you'd had a taste of championship and competitive football and obviously playing at a championship level is quite a high standard. Were you surprised if you had much discussions in regards to your international prospects at the moment? Um, yeah, I was a bit surprised but then again you can't let that set me back or think about it too much. you just got to go past it and then look towards the next one and hopefully I'll get included in that. Mm. Hope more game time and play and will obviously give me a better chance. So yeah, I'm not going to dwell on it. Just hopefully make the next one. And then... Um, Obviously, so many young players go through setbacks and make it in the game at the moment you're playing in the championship regularly. What perhaps attribute do you think you had to, to make? Obviously, there's still a long way to go in your career, but what made it for you that you've managed to obviously secure a, a future with Bristol City? I think it's like my intensity to get up against players and try and like win the ball. Like I'm, I'm aggressive in my tackles, but like, and I'm just very intense, like getting tight to my man. So I think that's helped me. Like a lot in Bristol City because like it's how we press and stuff, so it goes with the philosophy. So yeah. yeah. And um, you've spoken how much um, your family's had an influence, obviously, helped you, who you support and, and things like that. Do they, how do they support you now? Are you still living with them, or do, do, have you, as a young player, have you had to move to Bristol? Yeah. And then so I was in digs, obviously, from when I was a first year scholar to second year scholar. Then this season, I just moved into shared accommodation in Bristol, so I don't live with my family anymore, but I still go and visit them and stuff like that. So we're still really close. Do, do they regularly come to games then? As yeah, well, they've yeah. come to most of my games and stuff like that. So yeah, it's good. And uh, we've seen obviously Tommy Conway um, and Alex Scott live together and stuff like that. Do you perhaps have a friend in the first team, or do you still have to go to the under twenty ones for your friends? Or is everyone welcoming in the squad as well? Nah, yeah, everybody's welcoming, and I 
obviously I have like Marley and stuff that came up with me and then I live with Callum Wood and Harry which we live together and now they're all up here as well so mm-hmm. obviously it's a good it's a good little relationship we've got going on but I think everybody's welcoming 